Hello, Aaron Smith. Good afternoon. How are you doing today, sir? Excellent, Jason Thomas. It's been so long. We've I forgot how to podcast. So I know, I know. Go. A lot has happened in those days since we've done our last podcast, uh, specifically with the news about the PWBA tour being back in 2021 and back in a big way. Absolutely. Uh, last week, a lot of great news coming here from the uh, International Bowling Campus. And yeah, first and foremost, the 2021 uh, PWBA Tour season announced 20 events, uh, the, the introduction of the Classic Series, more than uh, 400000 additional in the prize fund across the course of the year. Uh, it starts in January, so it's like it's almost here already. So yes. uh, definitely a lot of excitement from the announcements last weekend. So shout out to, uh, to you, Chad, everybody, uh, to Neil, Rob, Roger, the whole crew, uh, getting all that together, uh, some great shows on the sport of bowling. Uh, some great guests as well. So it was fun to watch uh, as a fan and, you know, work on the on the backside of it. Uh, but, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to be back on the show. I'm excited to talk about 2021 now. This, this 2020 yes. nonsense has uh, <laughs> gone on for too <laughs> long. Get it over with. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, it, it's time. We're ready. Yeah, well, uh, today we have a, a, an excellent guest who's who's coming uh, onto the show all the way from, from Sweden. Um, we haven't had her on the show yet, and I'm really looking forward to talking about um, not only the bowling stuff, but some of the non-bowling stuff, because I think she's a really interesting person. So uh, looking forward to to talking to her today. Absolutely. And uh, with that, let's get the PWBA podcast started. Uh, Sandra Anderson, a champion here on the PWBA tour uh, in 2019. So we'll definitely talk about that. But let's welcome her in. And Hello. Hey. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? We're doing pretty well. Uh, you know, excited about the announcement that we made last week about PWBA. So just kind of getting ready for, for that to kick off. And uh, and then, you know, Halloween over the weekend was, was a lot of, was fun. I mean, even even though, you know, we couldn't do it like we normally do with, with all the, you know, social distancing and stuff. But still fun to dress up and have a fun time and then uh big election day coming up tomorrow here in the in the u.s do you do you guys care about that in sweden at all are you are you just kind of curious or interested i mean it's on the news all over the news but me myself i'm not very that interested in it to be honest so yeah. but it, it's impossible to miss it yeah certainly it's 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 pretty much occupying everybody's mind here. I, I, I'm trying to stay away from all of it, but, but uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's certainly uh, a big story here in the U S. Yeah. Sandra, uh, obviously it's been a while since we got to see you. Uh, I believe the tour championship actually the last time uh, we got to see you compete. So, uh, you know, what's, uh, what's 2020 been like for you, obviously, uh, as, as we reference here in Sweden, uh, so you're not here in the U.S. with everything, all the craziness we have going on here. Uh, so what have things been like uh, in a COVID-19 world uh, across the sea in Sweden for you? It's been different compared to the States, but it's been both good and frustrating. Um, for me, I, I started out like a year ago having a back injury that kept me away from bowling for a few months. And then when I just got back into bowling, um, the COVID-19 happened. So it felt like it was so frustrating when I finally got back on the lanes. I Everything got canceled and postponed and everything. So it's been both good and frustrating, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, did did the uh, additional time off help help with your back injury? And I know Sweden had some different theories as how they as to how they went about uh, the coronavirus was was a little bit more loose with the restrictions than some of the other countries in Europe. Uh, how's it all gone with that? And um, you know, how's your back doing now? Uh, right now, my back is doing good. So I started out with physical therapy. Um, Right, at, right in like January, I think. So our plan was to get me ready for the European Women's Championship that was going to be held in June. And that didn't happen. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but my, uh, we, uh, we uh, found a way for me to uh, get back on the lanes with the small workouts, strengthening my body. And I felt, I felt good. I actually competed in February 
which I did good. And then right after that, everything got canceled. So yeah, it, even if um, the theory over here with the COVID-19 restrictions and everything was uh, a bit um, easier to handle, uh, we still didn't have anything to bowl or compete or yeah. So were, um, were bowling centers open that so that you could practice at all there? Yeah, everything was still open, uh, but you had nothing to practice for. Right. So that that was a bit challenging to um, to still be able to practice and everything, but the the longer it went, the more uh, tournaments got canceled and uh, it was like some someone took something away from you like every day so it was tough to to keep it up to be honest yeah I mean I know a lot of players have expressed that it was very difficult to motivate themselves to practice mm -hmm. because of you know the fact that it's really a job and I you know what was your theory on that whole thing I know with the injury maybe it could have been that you uh, took some time off just to just rest, but I'm sure you also enjoy bowling just for the fun of it as well, correct? Yeah, I mean, we had um, something going on with Team Sweden at that time because we didn't know what was going to happen with, uh, with the European Women's Championship, so we kept practicing and getting ready for that. Um, and when that got uh, postponed until I think the first uh, date was actually in January, which meant that we actually had to keep practicing and keep everything going because we had something very close in f future, but it felt it felt like it was very far off, but still very close. So we did, um, actually we had some uh, competing against each other online with an app here in Sweden, Lane Talk. Uh, so we could compete against each other. So we had like two weeks, uh, to put our results in and then uh, we got a new pattern to bowl on and then we had another two weeks to put our results in. So we had a little something going on during the summer, but when everything came to an end, we we realized that we needed some time off too. So I had about like five weeks off this summer just to clear my mind and everything. Gotcha. Your mm -hmm. English is so fantastic. I, I, I wish, um, in America, we spoke more than one language. How many languages do you actually speak? And how often, you know, how, where would English be in, in, your, uh, in your list of how often you use different languages? Um, we, we learn English in school very early. So for me, I've always been like interested in English and speaking it, um, listening to music, movies and everything. Uh, the hard part right now is that I haven't been using it that frequently so, <laughs> <laughs> since I haven't been traveling that much. Um, you can't tell. <laughs> yeah, well, that's good. <laughs> but I mean, it's Swedish and English that I speak and then I can understand some Norwegian and Danish. That's pretty much it. <laughs> so, so cool. I just, I just, I, that's something I wish I, I knew I, I took French in high school, but uh, you know, um, when you don't speak it for 20 years, uh, you tend to lose lose touch with it a little bit. But I just think it's a cool thing. Yeah, I actually took some uh, French classes as well, but I can't I can't remember it. Yeah, <laughs> well, it, it, well it, what happens is they speak so quickly. Yeah, uh, that you know, you, if they would speak in in super slow, uh, you know, almost almost to the point where it seemed like something was wrong with them. I could probably understand it still, but it's just, it's just the words, they flow together so perfectly and I, I can't figure out which it's, word it's is. It's hard. It's hard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, since we talked a little bit about the back injury, uh, we've, and, uh, you know, on social media, you post a lot of videos uh, out there practicing. Uh, so what, what percentage is the back at right now? Is it, is it back to a hundred percent? Are you still trying to get there? Where are you kind of at on that? Uh, most of my weeks are a hundred percent. If, um, sometimes I, I have a bad week just like everyone else. <laughs> and, but it's just something that I have to learn to live with and be extra careful when I do certain things. I, I'm not supposed to be running or jumping a lot. 
so to put pressure on my back but other than that i'm i'm good to go <laughs> do you know do you know specifically what the what the injury is or what the the, the issue is with the back well, I I pretty much have on paper that I'm getting old because one of my <laughs> wow <laughs> one of my discs are like uh, uh, pushed together, so I don't have like the uh, the distance that is needed to get like I don't know how to yeah explain it in English, but one of the discs are are getting old and <laughs> yeah it happens I I yeah I I've been. Uh, diagnosed as being old as well uh, and that <laughs> tends to be the problem those discs just wear out over time yeah um, so okay well uh, yeah hang in there with that for sure I know I know in my case it is like kind of a daily thing like some days it feels great and then some days it feels not so great um, mm -hmm. but um, I know there are things that can be done to treat you know those those issues but yeah just good luck with it basically you're not Thank as old you. as That's, I am, so you're 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 doing better than me. <laughs> <laughs> That's something I've actually been doing during this pandem pandemic. I've been taking care of myself a lot better, so that's a good thing with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know yeah. a lot of people have, and I think that you know, if there's one good thing that that you know, there's not many good things that have come from this, but I think if there is one good thing, I think a lot of people are you know thinking more about their health and taking better care of themselves. Yeah. Which, which I think is is good, and hopefully it continues on when we all get back to the rat race. Uh, yeah, and especially taking the time now that we have the time that we actually take the time to do the things that our body needs. So. Right, right, right. I'll admit I haven't done anything. Because <laughs> <laughs> you, you were so healthy before, Aaron. Yeah, if you want to call it that, sure. But, uh, now, uh, Sandra, with the uh, announcement of the 2021 PWBA Tour schedule, uh, a few extra events up there, uh, you know, that's, I'm, I'm sure it ha has to have some, some level of excitement for you. Uh, in 2020, you know, obviously you guys kind of travel occasionally over here from events that, you know, that's how you ended up winning last year. Uh, what, mm -hmm. was, what was your schedule looking like for 2020? And, you know, prior to the pandemic for coming to compete on the PWBA and, you know, looking early at the 2021 schedule, uh, can you, you know, say for sure if you're looking at a handful of events or is that still uh, to be determined? Well, my 2020 was going to be so, so filled with uh, traveling and tournaments all over the world. And that didn't happen. <laughs> so uh, right now. For, I'm very excited that the tour is coming back, but for me right now, I'm just trying to focus on like the next two weeks because the number of cases are actually going up in Sweden again, and we have new um, restrictions from like last week. So now bowling is canceled again in Sweden. So we have a three weeks where um, at least three weeks that are canceled. Um, so it's really hard to to focus on what's going to happen in 2021 when nothing is happening right now. Some parts of Sweden are not even allowed to practice or uh, work out. So to be honest, we'll, we will have to wait and see what's going to happen with 2021. I hope I will be able to make it over there. But uh, yeah, yeah, time, yeah. time will tell. It seems like if you're just kind of paying attention to this, that Europe is a little bit ahead of the U.S. in terms of, you know, how the progression of of the infection rates and whatnot. Um, I know we are also doing, you know, some things uh, with immigration that will help, you know, players get over here to compete. Um, so, you know, stay tuned, you know, for that. Tanil Milligan is working on on those policies. Um you know, and that's also why I think we we uh, put those first two classic events at the ITRC, which allows us to you know to have a little bit more control in terms of you know protecting the safety of the athletes and kind of limiting um, you know anything bad that could that could happen. So uh, hopefully, you know, I'm, I think you are in the top forty eight, correct, from points last year. So that should qualify you for one of the spots if you are planning to bowl in January. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Fingers crossed, uh, something good will happen in these three weeks and onwards, so we can, I can make my way over there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and if and if uh, you know the folks here, you know, 
do a good job of wearing masks, um, you know, these numbers can start to hopefully go down quite a bit by, by January, which would be nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Now that we uh, have started to look forward to 2021 and all the excitement that uh, hopefully is going to take place, you know, uh, 2019, a pretty exciting year as well. Like I said, we're, we're just going to not worry about 2020, but uh, <laughs> uh, 2019 for you, uh, you know, in your trip coming here, uh, a great performance at the Fountain Valley Open on the way to your first PWBA Tour title. Uh, that tournament, uh, pretty fun. That was actually my first time to visit Fountain Valley. I hadn't been there for some of the previous events we were there, but uh, it, it was kind of a crazy day all day. It was a very tight battle for the uh, top few spots heading into the stepladder final. You ended up earning the top seed. Uh, and then, you know, even though it wasn't the, the highest scoring final match, it was certainly dramatic. Uh, a one pin victory over Brianna Cote to claim your first win. Uh, you know, just kind of looking back at that event, uh, you know, throughout the course of the tournament, uh, you know, just kind of walk us through that, that whole experience from, uh, you know, putting yourself in position to make the show to top seed to, you know, eventually taking home the title. Yeah, first of all, I was so excited to m making cuts. All um, My goal was to make cuts the whole time, to put myself in a position to make my way to a, a final. Um, I remember uh, the, the last cut before uh, the, um, the show was, I, the, whole, the whole time I had in mind to just enjoy every shot that I made. Um, I kept texting people back home that were still awake at that time and just to keep my mind very, very happy and very, yeah, put together. I, I When I'm uh, down from the approach, I like to focus on other things than bowling. And then when it's my turn, I get into my bowling bubble and I go up on the approach and, and I do what I'm supposed to do. So that was all I was uh, thinking about while qualifying to uh, the show. And um, I kept reminding myself that just enjoy your next shot. Uh, I was I was gonna do my best the whole time and it made made me earn the top seed and uh, and I just gave, I was gonna go into the finals with uh, a, a good thought in my mind, just one more shot. Yeah, that was a, an amazing finish. Um, you you had to throw a couple of strikes to put some pressure on your opponent and were able to do it. Uh, what was going through your mind? And they, they were tough. I mean, the lanes were very difficult. Yeah. Uh, what was going through your mind, you know, that, that last frame to put you in the frame of mind to be able to uh, to make the shots you did? Uh, actually, I, I moved back right. I know that I... Uh, I came a little bit too deep earlier in the game and I couldn't get my ball into the right spot. So I decided to move back right. And actually in the eighth frame, I threw a pretty good shot and left uh, a nine pin, uh, I think. And uh, then going into the ninth frame, I, I didn't like the shot I made, but I, I was in the right area at least. <laughs> and I yeah. left the seven ten. And and then I knew that if I took one and then made a really good frame, the last frame, I knew that I had a, a small chance. Right. So I just, like I said, I kept my mind into going into the frame with like one more shot, just one shot at a time. And that's what I did. And somehow I was able to throw the, the best shot of the, of the entire game. Yeah, those three, those three to finish the game were about as good as you can throw it when you absolutely yeah. have to have it for sure. I must have felt yeah. pretty good. Yeah, it felt <laughs> really good. <laughs> it, it really did. And to be honest, the only shot that I was, I was so determined when I stepped on onto the approach, making the first shot in the tenth. Like, if I make one good shot and I get a good ball reaction, at least I have something to 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 go on I, I i just put it all out there and the first shot gave me confidence enough to throw the next two yeah look and at that little fist pump <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah and, uh, yeah i mean i'm i'm normally a passionate person and that's just a 
tiny bit of <laughs> what, yeah, that was, that what was I awesome. normally look like. <laughs> uh, and then, you know, uh, one of the worst breaks, you know, to lose a title, you know, probably in the history of the PWBA. I mean, what were, I mean, I'm sure you felt bad for your opponent when that happened, but also the realization that you'd, you'd won, you know, what was that moment like for you? Uh, I wasn't. I wasn't watching the the last frame that Brianna bowled. I was just trying to uh, get my mind when she left. Um, she, yeah, there's there's the picture. Um, that's a very special picture for me. Um, so I wasn't watching, but when I realized that she didn't strike on her first ball, I just tried to get myself ready to bowl a um a roll off because right. i w i wanted to get my mind into that um position like it's to be right. ready to bowl a roll off right so that's what uh, what i was doing and then there was this awkward uh awkward feeling in the whole bowling center when she left the eight pin and that's the worst possible way to lose a title and my heart goes out to her for that. Sure. And, uh, it's, I mean, it's you tough. Had, I mean, you had tears in your eyes when you had realized that you'd won. And, you know, I know you've been close to winning, you know, titles on the PWBA in the past. Um, I'm sure you were one of the one of the people who were very excited to see the PWBA come back um, because it just offered another, um, you know, high level uh event that you could add to your resume but what what was was when you had the emotions when you won was it was it mostly just because of you know the drama of having to perform in the clutch or was it like the realization that you'd achieved uh, a dream to win you know a professional title it really was a dream come true and especially after um queens in 2016 I've always dreamt of uh, winning a tour title and realizing that I I bowled my absolute best in the frame that I really had to, to put myself in a position to be able to win and then win was really special. And that's, that's all you want to do. Like put yourself into the position. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. That's all that we can do. And, it was a cool moment to see kind of the emotion of of it you know come out yeah 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 and it was it was really special since it was the first title for a, a swedish girl as well so yeah it was special for everyone back home too yeah yeah that's uh certainly an awesome moment uh i, I was so uh, so happy to actually grab that photo. So I was the one who took that photo. Um, yeah. that was, uh, <laughs> it was uh, sent to me. So I, I kept it to myself for over a year and I posted it this year on the day where uh, the finals were held. And uh, yeah, yeah. I've, I've been looking at that picture uh, many times. <laughs> it, it was a very unique situation and so unique that I took myself off the screen when I went to go take it off. For, uh, <laughs> for, you know, that, that's where I went. But, uh, but, but yes, uh, um, you know, for the shows, I would always typically sit off to the side, getting ready for the press release and everything. And, and it was, you know, after she had uh, spared, it's like, holy cow, you know, this is uh, such a crazy moment. And, you know, every, everyone was kind of focusing on, on what was happening on the lanes. And I, I just kind of wonder, like, Where's Sandra at? What's she doing? And then uh, you were sitting there and just kind of in that moment. And I'm like, wow, that's that's so cool. That's, you know, she's just w w waiting for the opportunity, whatever it's going to be. It looked like she was going to be ready for the next step. And, uh, you know, you, as we mentioned, you didn't have to throw another shot after that that week. But uh, but, yeah, that was a, a very memorable moment, uh, you know, just kind of off the scene, something that folks didn't see. So that was mm -hmm. uh so that was very cool as well. Um, you mentioned the 2016 Queens. You were the top seed. Uh, unfortunately, you fell to Bernice Lim. Uh, pretty high scoring match. You bowled well, uh, but she uh, shot 248, I think, in that. Uh, and I know JT and and you both have some stories about that. But let's go back to Vegas in 16. And uh, uh, JT, you look excited to, to share your story. So I'm going to start with you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it's. I was hoping you wouldn't do that first but it's okay I'll, I'll share my story so, so when when we have the the tv crew 
uh, it's usually a different group of people every week. Uh, there's there's like a core group of about ten of us that that are there for all the tournaments. You know, the the producer, director, um, and a number of the key you know, positions. But then there's a, a a crew that comes in of about fifteen people that are new every week, and and there might be you know one or two weeks where they're the same people because we're in similar regions of the country. But this guy, uh, he was he was sitting out next to me on the set, and and when he saw you. It was like love at first sight. Like he was, <laughs> he was absolutely uh, smitten, and um, he actually was on the crew the next week. And he said, "Did did Sandra make the show this week?" And I said, "No." She <laughs> went home, and he was so disappointed. He was crying. <laughs> so anyway, if, if you weren't already, um, you know, I I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He was. I mean, you got. You got at least one admirer here. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> That's really funny. I, ho I hope I can make another show that he works at. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll let you know. I just we'll be on alert a little bit, but yeah, if you you, know, you seem like a normal enough guy, so uh, <laughs> <laughs> nothing to be wor worried yeah, about. No, no, so. <laughs> But, uh, you know, going through that week, uh, obviously the Queen's a unique tournament with kind of having two portions, the qualifying and then moving into match play. Uh, you went perfect through match play. Uh, you really, you know, kind of kind of worked your way through the first few matches and then kind of kind of caught fire towards the end on the way to the show. Just, uh, you, you know, and 2016, I think you were 24 at the time. So, um you know, just uh, b being a young player, you know, kind of kind of out there on, on tour, uh, making a run at a big event like this. What was it like to put yourself in position to, uh, you know, be the top seed and put yourself in position to win a major uh, so young? Uh, so my story actually starts like 10 months prior to the USBC Queens and I wanted to share it today. Um, actually, it, 10 mon months prior to the tournament, uh, I was in decision if I was going to quit bowling or if I was going to keep going. Um, cause I, I had been bowling bad for a really long time, what it felt like. And my self-confidence was so low. Um, so I, I really literally sat down and put up the pros and cons on keeping up with, um, with everything or just quit. And, I'm still here, so I didn't quit. <laughs> <laughs> I decided to um, take all the tournaments that I had scheduled out of the schedule. So I didn't, uh, I didn't compete for like five months. I just uh, practiced and uh, rearranged my my daily routines to get back to where I once was and. Uh, my my goal was actually the USB C Queens ten months later because that is one of my favorite tournaments to bowl. So my my I, I kept my eyes on on that goal and I started competing again in February, and the USB C Queens was held in May. So I was a little bit shaky going into uh, into the tournament because I hadn't been competing as much and. Uh, I didn't know what to expect, and I think I qualified. Uh, I may I was the last person in the cut, I believe, um, and I, I I bowled okay after making the cut I and mean, going into match play, and then I remember me and Dell were discussing uh, what part of the lane I was going to play instead to actually get the best out of my game and what the, the pattern was offering. So I remember that we moved me uh, way right and played uh, much straighter. And that was uh, when the results kept coming. Uh, I bowled uh, really good at the end of qualifying and then, or during uh, the match play. And um, yeah when I finally won all the matches and going into the the top seed into the uh, TV show, it was uh, really, really special because it, it was 10 months of really hard work and it felt like even even if I didn't win, it felt like a win to me because 
it was it was really special because uh, I I really decided to give back out there and be uh, be that good again, and I I, I accomplished that. Um, yeah. And I actually one part that I missed out on sharing is that two weeks uh, prior to uh, uh, competing. I got a text message from one of my uh, friends on Team Sweden. She texted me that she dreamt about me, that I made the, made the show of the USPC Queens. And she just woke up in the final game, so she didn't know how it ended. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, uh, that's pretty special. <laughs> did, you, did you blame her for losing? You say, hey, if you would have finished your dream yeah. and, and, and I'm winning, I would have won. <laughs> we have had a discussion about this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a great story, and it's a story yeah. I think you hear, uh, you know, from a lot of athletes who reassess whether you know they want to continue and how great they want to be. Uh, you know, what was it for you that made you decide to continue moving forward with your bowling career versus you know doing something else? I just hate to quit. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not born to quit. Uh, I'm very dedicated and I'm very passionate and I've realized that bowling is my life. It's not a part of my life. It is my life. So that was just it. Um, I decided to show myself and everyone else that I was good enough to do it. Yeah. And, and did you, did you commit at that point to more of a long-term goal or was it just, Hey, I, I want to accomplish these things before I, you know, finally do decide that it's time to move on from bowling? It was more like I want to give it my all now, and if it doesn't work, uh, it doesn't work. But then I can at least say that I gave it my all, and it did work, and it got me back to loving every part of it, like all the the downs, the ups, the, uh, the fantastic memories that we get, both from losing and winning. So even if I even even if I lost the final match, it still felt like a win because I won my love back for bowling at that point. That's a great that's a great story. What what would you have done if you had decided not to not to continue bowling? I don't know. <laughs> I would have so much time off. <laughs> uh, it great. would be so much time to spend on yeah. Anything and everything. <laughs> I see a degree back there behind you. Is that, mm -hmm. is that, is that uh, what is that degree in? Uh, it's actually um, a, um, uh, uh, they named me uh, uh, sports person of the year for last year, actually, in, in my hometown. So this is uh, the thing I got for. Uh, That's cool. For, yeah. Awesome. And there's also some drums behind you. What's what's up yep. with the drums? Well, I'm sitting in my girly makeup perfume room, and <laughs> my boyfriend wanted to make up for the girly room and put his drums here. <laughs> well, I know one person that's going to be very disappointed to hear that you have a boyfriend. But uh... yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, you know, it happens. It happens. What do you expect? What do you expect? <laughs> You've got a lot going for you. <laughs> well, we actually we actually got together uh, the day after the USPC Queens final, so he had a small chance okay. there for a oh, day. Okay. Oh, wow, wow, yeah. <laughs> it was, it, the time was urgent at that point. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Now, you mentioned the, the recognition in your hometown, which is, which is super cool, uh, and you've been part of Team Sweden now for uh, a handful of years. Uh, you know, what? what's it like uh, representing your country on the lanes? Uh, what have been some of your favorite moments so far uh, representing Sweden, uh, you know, across the globe? Um, well, so bowling you know, here in Sweden, we still uh, struggle to to get everyone else to think of sport uh, bowling like a sport. So for us, it's a huge work to put, um, put ourselves in the position where we show uh, our everyday life with uh, workouts. We we still have a full time job uh, at the side, and we uh, we are athletes. So we work really hard to to show that, and the recognition um, makes all of it worth it because that way they show us that we're doing the right thing. 
Um, other than that, I'm really happy to be a part of Team Sweden. I've been a part of it for quite some time now, even though I'm pretty young. <laughs> I wanted to <laughs> just put out there that I was young, even though I have no back problems. <laughs> um, so it's, it's really cool. And uh, being a part of Team Sweden has given me so many opportunities to travel. And uh, last year's uh, World Championships were the best thing that I've experienced with Team Sweden. So I have a lot of good memories with the, with the team. Now you talked about training and, and um, athletics, and I know uh, Martin Larson has, has spoken about this before, but he said one of the, you know, the things that's just different about Europe versus the U.S. is you do a lot more walking, and, and so, you know, and, and you know, eating tends to be a little more on the healthy side uh, than we, we see some, sometimes here in the U.S., but uh, I also am familiar with the training facility that you guys uh, get to train in. Are you in close proximity to that, or do you do you you know go there you know in more infrequently just because it's far away? Unfortunately, not. It's uh, about five or six hours drive from where I live, so I don't get to be there very often. But during my career on Team Sweden, we, we've been there. Uh, many times to get uh, help with both uh, physical things and uh, the um, everything you need to know about food and eating right and what the body needs to uh, to be able to work out and practice as much as we do. And we also get help with uh, with the like the physical part. Now that I got an injury, they still helped me with finding a physical therapist that could help me in my area. So um, it's a huge advantage for us to to be a part of Team Sweden and uh, have these uh, uh, have so much help from them, even though they're far away from us. Yeah, and uh, you know, you said that you know, just in general, in your country, you know, bowling is 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 seen as you know maybe maybe a lower tier athletic uh, endeavor, but I know that facility is amazing. Um, mm-hmm. t- t- tell the people at home of what 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 that facility, what what you know amenities it has, and and what you do when you go there. So many uh, many national teams go there to do uh, all the tests. Like um, I think they uh, they have it at the ITRC. Yeah. Uh, with uh, physical tests and everything, we have a place like that in Sweden where all the um, all the different sports can go to. Uh, some some sports are actually having their practices at the the facility, and some go there to to get the tests done and get educated in all the areas that um, yeah that are connected to the sports. Um, some uh, uh, some uh, educates in uh, coaching, in in food, in uh, how the body works, and you get to uh, yeah, you get to do a lot of cool things out there. And they have all the uh, equipment that you need to to measure all all types of things. So who, it's who a are, really cool the, place. Who are some of the famous athletes in Sweden that you've had a chance to meet uh, in in being able to go there? We've actually haven't met uh, that many people, but uh, normally we have like a different room so you don't get connected too much. Uh, okay. But the national teams of, I think, uh, I think hockey and uh, soccer and all them, they go there. And uh, also um, the, the athletes that do like the, Three and the the long jump and high yeah. jump and all the <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 they train a lot there yeah I mean hockey is pretty big there in Sweden right yeah I yeah mean, that's, that's like would 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 you say that would be like the most popular sport in Sweden yeah ho- hockey and soccer are the two the two biggest sports over here do you call it soccer or football. Uh, well, you, you use your feet, so <laughs> we, <laughs> we say football here. Yeah, yeah. But now You're that I'm talking right, to I you, I... Soccer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I, I guess I have to call it soccer now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's all right. We understand you meant football. <laughs> <laughs> now, you mentioned uh, you've been part of Team Sweden for quite a while, and you were actually... Uh, 
a national champion at 17. Um, yeah. So, you know, kind of, you know, I, I guess my question for to follow up to this is, you know, that's uh, that's a pretty young age to find that type of success to be a national champion uh, while you're still a teenager. Uh, was that something you expected? Kind of, you know, what was your bowling background leading into that? And was, you know, that kind of the first big win for you? Uh, I mean, I've bowled a national for youth uh, before that, but that was the biggest uh, national event that I bowled. Um, but as a 17 year old, I still had competed already for like 12 years. So wow. <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't that new. But it's always exciting when it happens, and it was, it was of course it was special when when I was that young, winning such a big thing with uh, with uh, a lot of uh, good names uh, in that final as well. So well, how did you get started in it so early? What who brought you uh, to the bowling center for the first time? Uh, my mom and dad. They run a bowling center here. So okay. I was pretty much, uh, yeah, I grew up in the bowling center. When I was young, I had I had a bed in the bowling center so I can fall asleep before my parents <laughs> ended work. <And laughs> so it's literally my second home. Now, I'm sure it was something you, you fell in love with on your own as well. Uh, but what when did you kind of feel like you knew you were, you were pretty good at it and, and wanted to be competitive? Uh, when I was a young teenager, I started work, uh, practicing a whole lot more. Uh, I bowled pretty much every day, and I bowled with uh, girls, guys, I, everything I could bowl, I bowled. And um, right after that, I was selected to bowl the, uh, the youth uh, national team in European Youth Championships in uh, Helsinki. So that I think that was when I understood that I'm pretty decent at this sport. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess. Now, were there any, did you watch a lot of, uh, you know, bowling on television? Did you have any bowlers that you looked up to? Who were, who were those yeah. bowlers? We, uh, in the bowling center that I, uh, I often went to when I was younger, not the one that my mom and dad runs, but another bowling center. They always showed PBA videos uh, down in their pro shop. So we always sat there every time we got like a few minutes off. We always went down there to uh, to watch uh, the big TV shows and yeah, daydreaming about making one one day. And uh, yeah, so um, uh, that was uh, that was uh, something that created a dream of making it on my own and some people that I have always looked up to is definitely Carolyn Doran Ballard and um, uh, Kelly Kulik uh, when she bowled uh, and won the against the guys that was that was so cool so yeah uh, that was pretty cool I was there yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I yeah. wish I was <laughs> yeah it was, it was amazing um, yeah you may, you may be too young to remember, but uh, Mats Carlson was one of the one of the, you know, one of the first um, bowlers from Sweden to break through on the PBA. He was actually the first foreign bowler to win yeah. on, the, on the PBA tour. Is he a big a big figure there in Sweden still? Um, um, I haven't I haven't seen him in a bowling uh, um, uh, gathering for quite some time, but his uh his uh kids uh, are bowling okay. so just a few weeks ago i bowled against his uh, two sons oh wow so, uh, that's yeah nice. that's cool so uh, he uh, he's keeping bowling in his family <laughs> yeah yeah he was awesome i certainly do remember he had a very unique style yeah <clears throat> and there is there is uh, of course uh two of the swedish uh bowlers as well that i've been growing up and idolizing it's uh, uh, Helen Johnson and Molly Glendon. They meant a lot to me growing up and I got to bowl uh, um, a few events with them before they um, they decided to stop bowling. So uh, they've been the two people that I've been working really close with and still uh, idolizing. Yeah. Yeah, it's um, and, and that's something we've seen kind of on the international scene for some time. Both the men's and the women's team from Sweden 
have been uh, have been very good. Uh, you know, even looking at uh, uh, you know the the World Seniors as well. Uh, some of those players I'm sure you looked up to have have found success. Uh, you know, getting to uh, now that you're on staff with Roto Grip, you get to work with Carolyn, get to work with Kelly. Uh, you know, what what are those experiences like looking up to them? You know, what was the first time you know you got to meet them, realizing that hey, this is this is cool, and now you get to you know essentially be be part of the same team with them when you're out on tour. Uh, you know, working together, uh, working with the ball uh, the ball reps. Uh, what's it like being able to share those experiences uh, as a competitor and not only a fan? Uh, they've been taking so so good care of me when whenever I go over there, and I'm very happy to to be able to compete ag- next to them, and uh, not only like watching them on TV. Uh, back in 2011, I made the World Tour Finals the first time. It was me, uh, another Swedish girl, Nina Flack, and then it was Carolyn Doran Ballard. And that was what I remember was the first time that I actually got to meet her and bowl against her. And that was that was a huge deal for me. Uh, I was actually standing on the approach next to her. <laughs> and uh, I mean, it's, it's great that you have someone to look up to and... Uh, dream about doing the same thing that they are doing and one day you're standing there next to them and competing uh, with them and against them and uh, they are so polite and taking so such good care of you and uh, they help you out when you need it so it's it, it's better than I expected <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, you've certainly earned their respect uh, as well. I'm sure you know they would they would say the same about you. But it does seem to be um, kind of a, a an unwritten rule in bowling that you know the the players at the top you know help the ones coming up. And and how how are you doing that? You know, with with uh, you know the upcoming bowlers in your country and other places that look up to you. So me and one of uh, my. Uh fellow Team Sweden uh, girls, we recently started uh, an Instagram to uh, to share our daily lives and inspire both uh, younger uh, girls and guys and older bowlers to to do what we do and share what what it takes to to live the life that we do. And I hope that that can inspire many people. And so that's what something that we do. And every time I get a chance, I, I love to share my my knowledge and my experience uh, with the youth in, in my center and uh, close by here. So um, I used to uh, coach the, the youth over here, but then it, it got a little bit too busy with all the traveling and yeah. a full-time job and everything. So my mom took over, and sometimes I help her out. And uh, I just I just love sharing whatever. I can to uh, be a part of uh, someone else's dream and uh, uh, yeah, helping them to achieve their goals and dreams. Where can people find that Instagram account that you have to help? Uh, it's called Två Vänner en Sport. Uh, so it's in Swedish. Um, but I mean, you can always follow all the pictures and everything. <laughs> it's the, the Instagram says um, two friends, one sport. Um, so this is where we uh, where we share our uh, our things, and we sometimes do lives when we have uh, competed. And uh, I mean, our plan was to compete and travel a bit more than we have done, yeah, but we're yeah. making the best out of the situation. And we try to uh, uh, share everything that we go through during uh, this pandemic as well, both good and bad. And I hope that it can help people just keep. Uh, Keep in, uh, yeah, stay in touch with bowling and uh, stay motivated and come back if they are not allowed to bowl right now. Very cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, we talked a lot about bowling. Uh, we haven't talked. Well, we've talked a little bit about non-bowling, but but what are some of the things that you like to do when you're when you're not bowling? What are some of your hobbies? Uh, my new hobby for this year was to. Uh, uh, to grow vegetables and <laughs> and all that in my yard, so that was my like little thing I did to uh, yeah 
take my mind off uh, everything that was going on in the world. So that's what I read, what I did during the summer. Other than that, one of my biggest hobbies and uh, it is makeup, it is skincare and perfumes and all that girly type of stuff. So that's what I normally do when I uh, when I want some. Yeah, well, my alone time and I do my skincare routine and <laughs> take care of myself. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of follow up questions from from those those two things. But uh, so so the first, let's start with the vegetable growing. How mm -hmm. is that going? And have you eaten any of the food? And is it good? Uh, <laughs> it was really good, actually. I okay. had potatoes and lettuce and carrots, and we got. <laughs> so much potatoes that I had to give it away so wow. <laughs> that was successful <laughs> and uh, and I actually had sweet potatoes uh, for now during the the fall but uh, that didn't work out so <laughs> okay. okay okay well uh, so 90 percent success <laughs> well, that's, good. that's I think that's a pr pretty good success rate now now the uh, cosmetics thing do you have like your own um, like YouTube or Instagram channel where you're trying to help people with their or, or is it more just like, you know, for your own personal uh, 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 Look uh, Well, I do not have a uh, YouTube channel or anything like that. Sometimes okay. I, I I share it on my Instagram account, but uh, I, I try to keep it about bowling, but I mean if people want to see more about makeup, I, I wouldn't mind <laughs> Uh, but I do work with uh, makeup and skincare and all that, like selling the products. And uh, sometimes I do uh, um, you know, wedding makeups and all that for people. But okay, uh, what, what not are, as much anymore. But. What? Go ahead and plug what you're selling. What? What? Uh, what is it? Uh, it? I mean, it's uh, makeup in general, and uh, it's a small uh, boutique that, that I work in that sells uh, makeup and skincare products and yeah and perfumes and and yeah hair products and everything what's the <laughs> so, name of, what's the name of it uh it's called groove so it's parfumery yeah okay. yeah i <laughs> i have no idea what that means but uh <laughs> sounds, cool. sounds really awesome can people in the u.s uh, uh, buy that that brand uh, no, it's it's uh, actually uh, the name of the store, and we sell different brands. So, okay. uh, famous brands that you might know of is Lancome and Biotherm. Um, Sensai is uh, also, uh, um, and uh, I mean, when it comes to perfumes, it's all about like Gucci, Yves Saint Laurent. Uh, yeah. yeah, you name it. Uh, so it's like it's like a, a tiny Sephora, you could say. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I have several friends that have been to Sweden. I've never been myself personally. I would mm -hmm. love to go someday. But they said the people in Sweden are the most beautiful people in the world. Uh, like all of them have <laughs> okay. said this, right? They they <laughs> came back and they said everybody in Sweden is good looking. So why is that? I mean, is that well, first of all is that true, or are they just are they, you know, just just whistling Dixie, or or is there something that you guys do there that, that makes you guys all look very attractive? I mean, if you ask me, I got to say yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, we know, we know, we know a, a person that certainly agrees with you there, right? We, we, <laughs> yeah, I know one person now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there's one. Yeah, well, I mean, it's very, it's a big trend over here to take care of, like, uh, like the skincare and do the makeup and, uh, a lot of people over here is interested in fashion and if you I mean uh, uh, influencers over here are really huge and even if in the smallest part of uh, like the smallest towns in Sweden they are so interested in everything and it goes down to a very young age I have had uh, like seven and eight year olds coming into the store buying makeup because they are going to do their YouTube channel. So, wow. uh, yeah, it, it starts in a very young age here, over here and people are very interested in it. So that, that, that can be a reason. I don't know. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. I guess. I, I mean, I guess it's part of looking nice is wanting to look nice. Right. I mean, like that's why I don't look nice because I just don't care. But uh. <laughs> Well, for me, it was like more of a, uh, 
a, a, such a big difference of my my daily life. I was walking around in gym clothes and workout clothes day in and day out. So for me, it's just uh, good to have something that is totally different from my normal routine that I can actually put on makeup sometimes. And, and I mean, sometimes I'm lazy. I don't put makeup on all every day, but. Uh, I think it's fun, and as long as I think it's fun, I'm gonna keep doing it. <laughs> yeah, me neither. I don't. I don't put makeup on <laughs> the show, and I still look this bad. But anyway, uh, Aaron, is it time for the for the binge watch question? Uh, I think so. We've uh, we're right around the hour mark, so it's been a great conversation so far. So uh, yeah, let's uh, let's learn a little bit more. Uh, Sandra, you know, we kind of end the show. We ask about uh, binge watch recommendations for everyone uh, who's watching the podcast right now. So I, I know in Sweden you may have some different uh, shows than uh, what we have here stateside. But, uh, you know, what are kind of your go-to shows, go-to movies? Uh, you know, what have you been watching recently? Uh, I mean, I'm a huge fan of Gossip Girl. I think I've seen that show like five times, all all episodes. Uh, so that is a go-to for me. Every time I need something to watch, I will put on Gossip Girl. It's girly, it's fun, it's fashion, and yeah. <laughs> but then I really love Suits. Uh, okay. Totally different, <laughs> totally different show. And lately, uh, we've been watching a lot of uh, the movie series, like Lord of the Rings. Oh. Now we're uh, into uh, watching Pirates of the Caribbean uh, okay. and a lot of Disney movies. Yeah. 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 Uh, Lord of the Rings is, is one of my favorite. My wife hates it because she's just like, just get to the end already. I mean, <laughs> Throw the dark ring in the volcano, for God's sakes. Why are we watching all this? It's just taking so long, but it's, yeah. great. it's a great binge watch. I'm struggling to stay awake the whole movie, but <laughs> even the, yeah. even if I fall asleep, I will wake up, <laughs> and the movie is not, it's not over it's yet. Not over, yeah. yeah. Uh, are there any, like, uh, shows that are that you watch, you know, that are Swedish shows or, or uh, shows that are, you know, geared – for people in your country that we don't really know about here that are good shows that we should look into? Um, no, not really. I, no. Not for me, at least, because I, I I'm a big fan of watching uh, movies and uh, about, shows that movies? are... Huh? What about movies? I know, I know Sweden has a very long and storied tradition of, of movie making. What are, mm -hmm. what are some good Swedish foreign films that we should be watching here in the U.S.? Mm, I'm probably the wrong person to ask because um, I, I, I prefer watching a movie that where someone is speaking English. I, uh, I mean, I can't watch a movie where someone is speaking French or uh, Spanish or, uh, yeah, I am not a big fan of that. So gotcha. I have what's a hard time. On, what's watching. on your arm there? Oh, this. Is a <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's uh, my uh, my tattoo um, for. Good luck and to create my own way, and the rest is oh, just art. That's very cool. Yeah, uh, I I do a lot of meaningful tattoos, so yeah. That's good. I mean, you wouldn't want to have some stupid thing on your body for the rest of your life. Right? <laughs> <laughs> as long as you can laugh it off. I mean, <laughs> I really but, like I really like the the your own way thing. That's that is awesome. Yeah. So I'm like, pointing my my own way. <laughs> that's really no, like <laughs> Yeah. Well, Aaron, that was that was nice. I I enjoyed uh, getting to talk to to Sandra. Any any last uh, thoughts, Sandra, before we uh, we we wrap up the show today? Uh, not really. I've had a I've had a fun uh, time sharing uh, and chatting with you. Yeah. Same. Same here. And. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we look forward to, to seeing you out on the tour next year uh, for sure. Uh, so, you know, stay safe and healthy. Um, yeah. Uh, hope, hope that, you know, the aging process uh, reverses for you so that it <laughs> uh, gets, gets better. But, uh, yeah. yeah, hopefully we'll, we'll see, you, you know, as many weeks as possible out on, on tour next year. Yeah, I really hope I can make it over, uh, over there sooner than later. And if you don't, I'm sure you'll win and take a bunch of money home back to Sweden. Like you always do, right? 
I really hope so. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, well, thanks so much for coming on the show today. We really appreciate thanks it. Thanks for having me. Yep. And we'll see you soon. See ya. See ya. Well, another successful show, Aaron Smith. Uh, a lot of fun getting to talk to Sandra and learn more about Sweden and her bowling background and bowling career. And, um, you know, the, the thing that, that really struck me about it was just, you know, the PWBA brings all these people together. You know, it, it's, it's a global sport. And, um, you know, it was really neat getting to have a chance to talk to Sandra about, you know, how, how much that, that win meant to her back in 2019 and um you know the whole process of uh, you know forging forward with her career when things weren't going that well back you know in, in 2016 uh so just really interesting to hear you know the perspectives there on that and um and then all the other cool stuff that we got to learn about you know tattoos and languages and and uh you know why people in sweden are so darn good looking that we did. It was a, a very interesting show. Uh, you know, you mentioned, um, you know, the sport really bringing people together from all parts of the world. And that Queen show had five different co countries represented. So there was the United States, Malaysia, Singapore, uh, and Germany and Sweden as part of that show. So that was uh, that, that was definitely a cool part of that as well. Uh, of course, throwing the big shots. Uh, I, I, you know, looking back at that, looking back at the scoreboard. Uh, for her win in Fountain Valley, uh, I don't think she had struck on that lane and threw all three in the tenth to, uh, you know, put the pressure on her opponent. So, uh, yeah, definitely, um, you know, as always, always great to uh, get to learn a little bit more about uh, the players uh, out on the tour. And uh, the most exciting part is now we have something we can say we can look forward to seeing them at. Uh, so hopefully, we get to see Sandra quite a bit uh, in 2021. And um, yeah, now we uh, we have the lineup of events we can go to so that's yeah really awesome it's, it's definitely exciting and you know again it just goes to show you how deep you know the field is out there on on you know the pwba tour uh sandra you know obviously a gamer a closer a champion and uh you know the more she's out here um you know the more people are going to be moving down on the on the list of, of checks so uh uh looking forward to seeing her out here next year on tour and you know seeing what what she can accomplish you know i i know um uh she, she's typically bold kind of a, a a more limited schedule but obviously the more uh she can bowl out here the the, the further we we can see how 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 uh, how great she really is absolutely and uh that's gonna kind of wrap up our pwba podcast today uh but you know we're kind of back to our regular schedule here on bowl tv uh obviously uh we got a few shows coming up and we got a great promotion offer going on. Uh, JT, let's talk about Wednesday. Bowling Explained, what you got? Yeah, uh, this week on Bowling Explained, we're gonna, uh, we are gonna. had an episode with Lou Marquez a few weeks back where we talked about how to build an arsenal. And this week he's going to go down the rabbit hole of you know, how, to, how to lay out bowling balls. And, and there's a lot of mis misconceptions out there about layouts and how, how big of an impact they actually have on ball motion. So we're going to talk about that and then talk about how to specifically um, to you know, fine tune your layout for your particular game. So it should be an interesting show on Wednesday. Absolutely. On Thursday, Matt Canzaro and I will be on Inside the OC with Chris Prather, uh, who obviously has many, many accolades now on the PBA tour. But uh, you know, first jumped on the national scene at the Open Championships in 2011, rolling an 800 series, uh, and nearly taking a win back then. He is an Eagle winner. Uh, he's been close so many times. He has. A massive career at the Open Championships, along with you know all the things he's done on the PBA Tour as of late as well. So uh, definitely looking forward to that as well and catching up with Chris. Uh, and then I believe Friday, are we back on the uh, top twenty season? We are. We're down to the the final four, Aaron Smith, and uh, we have uh, kind of a, a throwback coming up this week. Uh, Dottie Fothergill's um, season uh, back back in the seventies. So. Or was it 69? 69. Uh, 68, I think. 68. So um, it should be uh, an interesting show. You know, a lot of people maybe maybe didn't aren't aware of how great uh, a player Dottie Fothergill was. Uh, she did make another appearance on our on our countdown earlier um, in the season, but uh, this one you're you're not going to want to miss it because it was a, a fabulous season. Just think of all the great seasons we've already had. 
and uh, you know the, there's four left. And so where is you know CDB's great 2001 going to rank on on, on the final list? Um, you know, but Dottie coming up uh, this week at number four. So check that out on, on Friday. Absolutely. So folks, we hope you have a great week. Uh, obviously, part of the announcements last week, Bull TV special in uh, or for the rest of the year. So $49.95, get your annual subscription taken care of. That'll cover the entire PWBA tour season, not only the national, but you also get the regionals as well. And then all the great coverage you're used to seeing on Bull TV all available, $49.95, save $30. Bucks. Uh, have that deal until the end of the year. So be sure to yeah, take it, advantage it's of that. The end of 21. So you'll get, you know, it's not like it's just the one year nope. from the day you buy it. It's it's the whole year's worth of events, and there's going to be around 90 or so events, which is it makes me tired just thinking about it, Aaron, <laughs> uh, covering all those events. But it, it's going to be fantastic if you're a uh, you know, Bull TV subscriber, there's going to be stuff for you basically, you know, every week, more than once a week. So absolutely. Uh, and the schedule's available, bull.com slash bull TV as well. Uh, you can kind of see the, what the plan looks like. So a lot of great events. Uh, but yeah, take advantage of that deal. Once again, it uh, expires at the end of 2020. So you got some time, but a great present as well. Uh, but for today's show, that's going to do it. Uh, so we want to thank everyone for joining us here on the PWBA podcast here on Bull TV for our guest, Sandra Anderson, uh, Jason Thomas. I'm Aaron Smith. Everyone have a great week, and we'll see you soon right here on Bull TV. Remember, folks, bowling lives here on Bull TV. Have a great day. We'll talk to you soon.